Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Final Fantasy. In the last episode, we defeated Lich. And we restored one of the crystals. And we got text messages. And we uh, made it out of there and made it back to Melman. And in this episode... Nice. In this episode, we are going to continue on. Now, I mentioned in a previous episode, before we got to Melmond, I think, that there was some stuff that we could do over in this general area. Mostly this one town right here. Um, and that is where we're going to be heading now. We could have headed there before, and like I said before, I did head there, and I got some magic and some armor and stuff. But there was really nothing plot specific for us to do there, and I will go more into detail about that when we get there. But basically we just want to sail directly down. Um, if you look to... Uh, what buttons am I trying to press? If you look... Um, we would have to go like down and around and go this way, but uh, the map is actually like uh, round, like uh, the globe. So if you sail off to the left here, you will eventually come off the right side. So we're just going to head directly left to get to where we're going. So that's pretty neat. It's pretty cool. Good times. All that fun stuff. And that's the port that we're looking for right there. I know we've seen these guys, but who cares? Let's kill them real quick. Hopefully. Every time I say that, it's like it takes way longer than it needs to, but... Whatever. We'll just do it. And, uh, yes. This is the port we're going to. And this is the Crescent Lake. I don't know if that's important or not. But, this is where we need to go to get to the town. Now, if you came here before, you would notice that there are some slightly tougher enemies. They're the kind of enemies that we fought, like, at the, uh, at the uh, bottom floors of the Earth Cave, or the Power Peninsula. And in the trees, there's some more nasty stuff, like these guys. Uh, these guys are... I don't think they're hard, but I think they can poison, just like... Pretty much everything else up to this point. <laughs> uh, and there's three of them, so I guess it could be pretty tough, so be careful coming in here for your first time. Um, you can also run into like giants that we saw at the Power Peninsula, or um, what are some other things? Some minotaurs, we saw those in the Earth Cave. Uh, there's quite a few different enemies around here, but nothing too terrible ah, unless you want to get into how many of them there are because now there's four of these stupid things and uh, they do hit pretty tough uh, pretty tough yeah they hit tough they hit hard uh, they are tough um, but I mean we're fine we're right outside the town too so who cares do your worst Yeah, but uh, like I mentioned before, there wasn't really anything plot specific um, to do over here. If you if you look around, this is this whole place is either blocked by water or mountains, and the only thing you can access right now is this town. Um, you can't go anywhere else from the port that we docked at, besides this town. So, uh, let's just go to the inn real quick. I'm not even sure if I've shown off staying at the inn yet. Uh, it's pretty cool, though. You just all get your own bed and have a good old time. So that's nice. And, uh, I think I did actually, <laughs> uh, fix, quote-unquote, the audio issues I was having. Um, we'll see how that goes, though. This is one of those, uh, revive you guys. This is an item shop. Let's see if they have anything cool. No, they don't. Lame. Um, and this is the armor shop. This is where I got the mithril stuff that I got for our guy. 
there is a buckler here, as opposed to the mithril shield. I have no idea what that would be good for. It's the exact same price as the uh, mithril shield, but it's a lot worse. Maybe it's for, like, the thief? I don't know. A different character that can use shields, the red mage, or something. I don't know. And, uh, this was the weapon shop. I got the mithril sword, I believe. There's some other stuff, but nothing too great. I don't use axes because they're generally very low in accuracy. Like, that had 10 and that had 15. I don't know. I just don't like axes. They suck. Never have. This guy's asleep. And all of these are just gravestones. I don't think there's any more gravestones that say anything cool. Hello, lady. Huh. I agree. And then there is some magic here. I bought Proterra and Invisera like you saw in the fight with Lich. And like I mentioned in the last episode or the episode before or whatever, there is also the exit spell. Um, but we can't learn that yet. And then Cure Stone. I like the idea of being able to Cure Stone because it's a real pain in the ass to deal with. But I'm really holding out for Exit. I like Exit more. So uh, we'll get that eventually, I'm sure. There's also some black magic that I didn't buy. Just because it was, it was a bit pricey and I didn't really feel like grinding up the money. And uh, it was nothing really that we needed. But uh, we can get it now, I suppose. There's Thundaga. We'll get that. Uh, Death rarely works. I don't know. Quake probably doesn't really work that much, and neither does that. I don't know. I'll look into it. Maybe I'll get some other stuff later. But the main reason we want to come into this town is back in here. It is the Circle of Old Men. Which I'm sure is not exactly what this is called. Uh, Circle of Sages? The Sage Circle, I don't know. This is Lucan. Uh, if you remember, the prophecy was made by this guy. I see, a cycle of wrath, a dim light guided by destiny, that about which our entire future revolves, and he doesn't really say much of anything useful. Uh, Twelve Sages guided by the land of the start of the prophecy. None of these guys really say anything useful. At least, not really. Uh, four great crystals exist in the world. The light that once shone within them is now lost. Four fiends of chaos block the power of the crystal, claiming it as their own. Uh, so that basically means that uh, every crystal is going to be guarded by something. Like the first one was guarded by Lich. And the next three are going to be guarded by something equally as crap. Fire, earth, wind, water, and wind. Um... These are the four forces that compose our world. Uh, yes, yes they are. Sources, uh, <laughs> the source of the four forces are the altars scattered throughout the world. Uh, defeat the fiends that have taken root there and lift up the crystal as you carry to the altar. Uh, the crystal should regain its brilliance. Uh, I'm having trouble here. Four fiends plot to rule the world, both past and present. The fiend of wind appears, appeared 400 years ago, followed 200 years later by the fiend of water. Together, they laid waste to the civilization in the north. Fancy. The fiend of earth rots the land. Well, not anymore, he doesn't. Where the fiend of fire passes, all is cast into flames. That is interesting stuff. When all four crystals shine once more, return here. All will be revealed. Alright. Bring the light of the four crystals to us. Warriors of light, only you can do this. Well, I'm sure. The volcano, Mount Golg, rises to the west of this town. The fiend of fire long slept within its passages. But she has awoken 200 years before her time. Vanquish her before the world is consumed in flame. That is our next objective, by the way. <laughs> and this guy here, well done, Warriors of Light. You have defeated the Fiend of Earth and restored the Crystal's Light. Sadly, this has drawn the notice of the Fiend of Fire, who was not to have stirred for another 200 years. Take this canoe and go face the Fiend in Mount Gulg. If you would have come here before defeating Lich, he would not have given you the canoe. 
and thus you would not be able to continue with the game uh, in this direction rather uh, so really no sequence breaking I guess is the way to put this because now what the canoe does it is it allows us to go onto this water and swim around and what we need to be doing is going this way and here's some anacondas I think we've seen these but uh, there's still a pain and there's still something that can poison you and I still hate them so uh, we're just going to set them on fire because I love doing that but yes we want to follow this water around and find the uh, what's the name that they were just talking about the volcano so we could fight the fire fiend but what I want to do first is I want to check something to see if it's different in this version because I'm super curious um, so I'm just going to end the episode right here uh, not too long of an episode but not too short either uh, and I'm gonna go check that out if it works then I'll show you what I'm doing if it doesn't then I will just meet you back here and we will continue onward into the waters of hell um, because uh, the the enemies on the water at least in the original were a real pain in the butt to deal with I'm gonna try and show one off real quick but now it's not going to do anything so uh, all right then there are no fights in the water I lied all right never mind so uh, yeah I'll meet you back at Crescent Lake in the next episode. So thank you very much for watching. I hope you have a wonderful day and goodbye.